And so we'd like to uh, invite up Ricardo Ribalda, who's a product engineering leader at Q Technology. And Ricardo uh, has been working for years on the next generation of industrial cameras. He's an expert in computer vision and uh, leveraging uh, open source. He's uh, been uh, very involved in uh, Linux uh, projects, leveraging open, open source. And so uh, it's been our pleasure uh, to partner with Q Technology. And uh, I want to thank you, Ricardo, for joining us. And we look forward to hearing uh, some thoughts on uh, technology and food inspection. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mark. It's, it's a great opportunity to be here. Um, so industrial computer vision, let's start from the very, very beginning. And the very, very beginning is 1969. In 1969, the CCD was invented. The CCD was the first way we were able to have, uh, to see images uh, using silicon. And it was invented in 1969. And you can see that the industry were holding their breath for this achievement because just three years later, we could see the first module that was using the CCD to look into computer, to look into car brakes, make sure the brakes were properly built. And just eight years later, the industry explodes. We see tens of machines that are using computer vision. And everyone, all of these uh, installations have one thing in common. They were a small pieces of art. We didn't have enough computation power back then. So, every single application needs to be completely tailored. And they were not super complicated applications. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's <laughs> considering the amount of power they were having back then, but they were always looking into artificial stuff. And when you are looking into artificial stuff, you are looking into, you always have a reference point. So let's say we want to look into screws. When we look into a screw, you have a reference screw, and if you take a screw, you take an image of the new screw, you compare it, and if it's not exactly the same, the screw is wrong. You can do the same with PCBs, you can do the same with chips. But when you're looking into potatoes, when you're looking into carrots, when you're looking into natural stuff, there's no such a thing of a, like a reference potato. There's no such a thing of a reference carrot. So what do you do? Well, you need to use a lot of computation power, and you are not only looking into a reference uh, carrots. You're not not, you, of course, uh, what you have in the, in the pipeline is going to be most of the time potatoes, but you, all want, you also want to look into some properties. So, for example, in potatoes, we are looking into uh, green spots, we are looking into black spots, we are looking into uh, a scarf, uh, and also you want to make sure you don't sell golf balls, because you know they are not very tasty. And, of course, you don't want to sell potato fruits. Your potato fruits is the fruit of the potato is super poison. You don't want to kill your clients. They will not buy more potatoes from you if you kill them. So how do you do this? Well, um, as I said before, you need a lot of computation power because what you are going to do is do a lot of 3D in order to measure the size of the potatoes and of course deep neural networks. You need algorithms that let you generalize what a potato is and, and continue with, with that process. Uh, we started with uh, potatoes. Uh, this potatoes has been our main uh, product for the last years. And we started with this project in 2002. And in order to get the amount, in order to get the right throughput, we can call it potatoes per minute, we needed a lot of DSPs. Uh, not one, not two, we needed tens of DSPs. DSPs is just a fancy word for a chip that can only multiply and carry and we need tens of them. Uh, that was super expensive and difficult to produce. Um, so in 2005, we moved from that platform into an FPGA platform. And uh, I guess you work with them. They are good, they are amazing. You can make any circuit in theory with them, but they are very complicated to process. And uh, also developing PHDL requires time, requires validation, and yeah, it requires a lot of money. In 2009, uh, we decided to explore different uh, markets, explore different architectures. And before we explore the different markets, we built a new platform where we could have a modular system. So we moved all the computation into the body of our camera, and we took that external firewire camera and we integrated it in our system, but like a separate module. And thanks to that, it was uh, a new step in, it was a step in the right direction. Um, but 
before we move forward, you need to look into this trend. 2002, 2005, 2009, it's like, what, four years per say, development cycle? And also, every single of these products were exactly like the products they were in the 80s. They were super custom-made. These things were nothing more than a potato counter. But in 2012, everything changed for us. Uh, we moved into, we decided to use AMD APUs, and that opened the market for us. That, that was a completely change in direction. That was a, an increase in quality for us, because right now we can leverage from a huge ecosystem of libraries and, uh, libraries and companies that can help us. So for example, in terms of uh, OS, we can get the help from Mentor Embedded uh, Linux for, for doing the OS. So we don't need to take care of uh, security and, and things like that. And when we want to take care of uh, uh, computer vision, we can use OpenCV. When we want to use neural networks, we can use TensorFlow. We can use PyTorch. There's a huge amount of um, work that we can leverage from. And also, we have been working very close with the open source community. We have been upstreaming our work. And thanks to that, we can access all the software, all the hardware from our camera from video for linux uh, which is, uh, is a great thing. And Right now, we are not anymore in front of a system that is custom. We are not in front of just a potato machine, just a potato counter machine. Now we, are, we can produce new products based on this platform. And these products are not made in four years. They are not made in two years. They are made in three months. They are made in two weeks. And this has been one of the last products we have built into this platform. Yes, they are in the food industry, because that's where we have our clients. That's the industry we know. But we are also in, uh, entering uh, other markets, like, for example, research and development. We have been working very close by with uh, Carlsberg. And um, in the research and development lab, they are very interested in you know, making sure their beer doesn't have particles, their beer doesn't have, uh, or don't have the right amount of particles. And up to some, year, up to some months ago, the only way they were, the way they were doing it is, was with an expert taking a beer and putting it in front of light. And now they have a machine which can objectively figure out how many particles uh, there's, uh, there's in their beer. Um, uh, Carlsberg, uh, very nicely, they have allowed us to bring the instrument uh, to the embedded world. And, and if you want to see it, you can see in the, in the AM booth, in the booth in that place. And yeah, um, what is the future? So right now, if you remember at the beginning, I was talking about a new order of magnitude of complexity when we move from artificial stuff into natural stuff. Now we are also in the middle of a new order of magnitude change. Uh, Hyperspectral imaging is becoming super affordable. Hyperspectral imaging is when you have images that only doesn't have one, two, or three colors. They have tens or hundreds of colors. You can use it for material analysis, you can use it for finding bacteria, you can use it for doing science, you can do it for analyzing the ground. Um, and the problem with these images is, first of all, you have much more colors, you have much more images. It's not anymore an image, it's a cuboid of images, and you need a lot of computing power. And the other problem you have is that your brain is not used to work with more than three colors. So we need automatic algorithms that can look into this data and try to find patterns when our brain cannot. Uh, at the beginning, I was saying that in the, in the 1980s, they were looking for an architecture that was could do generic computer vision. I think we are in the right track. I think we have a, a machine that can be used for doing uh, generic computer vision. I think AMD will still help, will continue helping us uh, giving us more throughput, more throughput, so we don't need to take care anymore of fine-tuning our applications. And they will give us better drivers so we can use all these performance from the GPU. And we, Q Technology, will make sure that we can, uh, all that tremendous performance, we can pack it in a nice way so our clients can make use of it. And I think I already well, well, all well beyond my time because I get excited when I speak of potatoes. So, <laughs> thank you so much for your time and thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.
Well, I'll tell you, uh, first off, uh, on, your, uh, on your ask, uh, we're definitely going to be there driving generation after generation, giving you more performance, more throughput at lower power. That's what uh, we're, uh, and, and the industry for that matter, here to, here to do. So that's uh, the inexorable pace. But I, I think there's a real uh, lesson in a couple of the, the comments that uh, Ricardo uh, gave us, and that is look at the speed at which uh, Q Technology and Ricardo and team have increased their now their product delivery. So they invested in uh, computer vision, a set of embedded machine intelligence, attacked it on on an application like potatoes, a food inspection, and then look at how rapidly they're going after other applications. And I think in, in our embedded industry, I, I think that's, that's a very inspirational so seeing that story. And it tells you about the speed of, of uh, product development going forward. Because things are changing, development is moving more rapidly, uh, and you know, the advent of these uh, applications is changing uh, fundamentally uh, how the network is going to be deployed. And we can start off looking at 